I'm Clarice and I'm the founder of Amplify OT. Today I'm continuing our series on the OTA modifier payment reduction from Medicare Part B and what AOTA has been doing to advocate against the OTA modifier. And we actually had some really great news this last week that ties really well in with this topic. So let's get to it. As you may remember, the OTA modifier is the Occupational Therapy Assistant modifier that was introduced in 2020, but in 2022 is slated to carry a 15% payment reduction under Medicare Part B claims. So check out the videos for one and two for more information on those topics. Before we dig into the good news, it is important to understand that there are two sides to Medicare laws and how they're made. CMS controls the final rule and regulation language, and Congress creates legislation that gives direction to CMS on what types of changes they want to make to Medicare. So these corrections, uh, directions can be general, such as the Impact Act, or specific, like the new legislation or the therapy cap. Either way, AOT, AOTA routinely advocates to both sides. So AOTA has been advocating for changes and delays to the OTA modifier CMS, which is why you saw a call to action last September. That call to action was for the commenting period on the proposed rule for the physician fee schedule, uh, which included the language for the implementation of the OTA payment modifier reduction. So the commenting period is an opportunity for the public to provide feedback to CMS on the proposed rules and CMS does have to read all of those comments and take them into consideration. So we should be expecting to see the final rule published sometime later on this year. So on the congressional side, AOTA has been advocating for action from Congress and prior to the most recent news, they had uh, congressional leaders sign a letter encouraging CMS to consider the different modifications that AOTA was proposing, um, such as delaying it or providing exemptions. And this was proposed by AOTA and other associations. Simultaneously, AOTA has been working on legislation to be introduced in Congress, which brings us to the news from this last week. So last week, the American Occupational Therapy Association, or AOTA, introduced the SMART Act in the US House of Representatives. The SMART Act is the Standardized Access to Medicare Rehabilitation and Therapy Act. So this is a bipartisan act that is supported by both AOTA and APTA. The legislation was introduced by Representative Bobby Rush, a Democrat from Illinois, as well as Representative Jason Smith, a Republican from Missouri. First, the SMART Act would require CMS to delay implement so this is a delay implementation of the OTA modifier to allow clinicians and, and clinics to have time to implement and understand the payment modifier uh, reduction accurately. So the reason we're asking for a delay is because the final rule will only be announced one to two months before uh, the rule would need to be taken effect, right? Before it would need to be implemented on January 1st of 2022. So as you can imagine, this would be very difficult to execute as it takes time to educate clinicians and clinics and update the billing uh, departments and the medical records. So without a delay, there is certainly a possibility of numerous billing issues involving the modifier due to lack of preparation. So that's another reason why it's really important to stay on top of these issues before your employer tells you that they're happening so that way you can be prepared. So secondly, the act would move to reduce the negative impact of the OTA modifier by providing exemptions for rural and underserved areas to mitigate the impact of the OTA modifier altogether. So obviously this is important because as we've mentioned before, rural and underserved areas rely more heavily on OTAs than the urban areas where OTs are more prevalent. So it's really a patient access issue. And then lastly, the bill would require CMS to standardize supervision requirements by eliminating the burdensome direct supervision requirements of OTAs and PTAs for Medicare Part B. So this would be a huge win for the outpatient world as it really increases opportunities for assistance in outpatients settings um, that may have not been previously able to participate in that area. So Medicare Part B is the only uh, part of Medicare that requires direct versus general supervision. So if this bill passes, it would really be a game change for assistance in the outpatient world. So before uh, we end this video, I feel it's really important to address some of the frustrations that I've seen expressed around the OTA modifier. 
um, and why AOTA isn't advocating for the repeal of the OTA modifier in this bill. So AOTA was successful in preventing the implementation of the OTA modifier reduction prior to 2018. Uh, the individuals working with AOTA on the Balanced Budget Act of 2018 decided not to reveal that they were including this language for the OTA modifier in that legislation. So it was really a surprise to AOTA staff when the bill passed. And as someone who sat in on those meetings as an AOTA student, I can certainly verify that this was true. So since 2018, AOTA has been advocating against the modifier entirely, but CMS and Congress have both said that they absolutely will not consider any language that entirely repeals the modifier. So we're left with making the best of an unfortunate situation. So also part of why CMS is so resistant to changing this is because really what this bill is doing or what the OTA modifier is doing is um, standardizing the way Medicare reimburses assistance. So physicians are reimbursed more than nurse practitioners and PAs for the same services. So PAs and nurse practitioners are also only reimbursed at 85% of what a physician is. So that's where that 85% number came from for OTAs and PTAs. So the most important part, if you want to share your story and take action is to support the SMART Act. So visit aota.org forward slash take action. AOTA has an editable letter ready for you to use. Um, I emailed my legislators this morning and it did take more than like a few minutes. So be sure to subscribe also to my newsletter and using that link in my bio or amplifyot.com forward slash sign up so that you'll be up to date on all the latest OT news about policy and advocacy. And don't forget to tag me in your post so that I can share your advocacy on my page. Alrighty, well, thank you folks. Thanks for listening and let me know if you have any questions about the OTA modifier. Thanks.